Hello, I'm Jonathan Rivers. I'm with the WSB. I'm a WSB agent, and I'm here to see DC of DC Soap Sanctuary. I believe he is a patient here. I need to see him immediately. Okay, he is in a critical condition. I'm gonna actually need to see your ID and your WSB clearance. Yes, identification, absolutely. Here you go. Uh, is that a library card? No, sir, it is not a library card. I'm an official WSB agent. I need to see him immediately. He's become very delusional. It's pretty terrible. Uh, take a look. Mike and Nina are an amazing couple. Mike and Nina forever. Sonny and Nina. My viewers didn't agree, but they make a great couple. They're great for the show. Mike and Nina forever. My oh my goodness. It's even worse than I thought. Uh, I'm checking the list here, and I don't see your name on here for WSB clearance. There's only two agents that were given clearance. That's Agent Bostic and Agent Devane. But I don't see your name anywhere here on the list. Um, but no worries, I'll just go ahead and call the WSB uh, clearance department and we'll see if we can get you approved, okay? Uh, just give me one moment. I'm just gonna go ahead and give them a call here. Let me see here. They, 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 they take a while to get back to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. DC, are you able to hear me? Can you go on to do the review? The viewers are waiting on you and they need answers. Of course I will. I've been undercover for the WSB. Now it's time to get to the bottom of it, of what happened to my channel. Let's go. Hey guys, I'm DC and welcome to the Soap Sanctuary where all soap lovers are welcome. Man, I haven't said that in so long, guys. Guys, it feels so good to be back. Thank you guys for coming to this GH review, the Shady Brook of it all, guys. I, I think that sums up this week and me not being on like, YouTube promos for about like a month. Uh, how'd you guys like the promo video, by the way? That was very GH, right? You know how GH always has dramatic promos? They'll say, daytime Emmy winner returns. <laughs> You gotta have fun with the situation that you go through in life, guys. You just gotta enjoy it, guys. But listen, guys, let's just get right into some housekeeping stuff that you guys wanna know before we get into this review. First question is, why did my channel get deleted? Well, here's what happened. Um, it wasn't the fact of the content that was my videos. It was the last video I posted, which was the South African versus American soaps, where I was doing the overview of South African soap operas. And in that video, I said I was gonna start reviewing South African soap operas as well, in addition to GH and Days. Now, I'm not a rocket scientist, but I kind of put two and two together. If 24 hours after that particular video got posted, all of a sudden my channel got shut down, it was because of that video. I think it was because it was content in a foreign country. Because YouTube can give you a copyright claim. I have those on like every other video that I had in the past. That was nothing. But a copyright strike is very, very different. So I'm pretty much don't really have to change that much up on my channel. I just won't be touching South African soaps or that content with a 10 foot pole because of what happened but I can still keep going on as normally, but I'm gonna just be a little bit leery, you know, until I feel like the coast is clear at this point. But that was pretty much the video because I've gotten copyright claims. And I don't care to do this for money, but that's pretty much what it was that got my channel shut down was that particular video, which sucks because I lost all my subscribers, all that stuff, but hey, what are you gonna do? This is one of the reasons why as a content creator reviewing soaps, I do a lot of timeless videos. If you guys, some of you guys remember the past, I did the top five LGBT couples or top five soap operas of the past. The reason why I always do videos like that is because they're timeless. And because they're timeless, that means you can go back and like any person who comes to my channel can go and look at those videos. It's not like a GH review video where those are kind of like time sensitive, where someone new comes to the channel, they're probably not gonna go back and watch that. 
but they will go back and watch top five because that's more timeless, that makes sense. Next on the list here is Ingo Rademacher, AKA Jasper Jax on General Hospital. Let's talk about Jax for a minute. Um, you know, I've heard about the whole controversy. I was on Twitter and I saw that, which Twitter is the only social media that I have and it's for the channel. So Twitter is hella toxic though. Like my God, y'all, y'all travel, y'all do stuff outside. What's going on? So Twitter, y'all, y'all be mad. What's going on? <laughs> Bullying people and stuff, not cool. Come on, guys. Like, come on, man, really. But um, I saw it on Soap Twitter from a few weeks ago, and I know Albert had touched on it too. Apparently, his comment about a someone who it was a US representative, I guess, if I'm not mistaken. I saw a little bit of the video of ET Canada and stuff like that. What I'm gonna say is this, um, because as a person, as an individual, I'm very careful. There's like six things I'm very careful before I ever will call someone. I'm very careful before I call somebody a racist homophobic, transphobic, lazy, greedy, vindictive. Those are a couple of words I'm very careful about before I call someone, regardless of what is going on in the media, regardless of what is going on out there. It seems like his firing decision was probably more so based on the vaccine since his comment um, was a while back ago. What I'm saying his comment was more recent and I know with soaps, the way they fire people usually, if it's not contract negotiated or something like that, is usually done in advance. They have a notice, they know when they're doing that. Um, but my whole thing is, I would just say this. If you're not part of a particular marginalized, marginalized group, be very, very careful about what you say about them. Be very, very careful. It's a thin line you walk. Um, even for him with the vaccine thing, and I'll say this, I'm not vaccinated, and I, nor do I have any plans to be in the near future. Um, and I have my own reasons for that. I work from home, I don't really have contact with people, and I don't see the need for it, personally for myself as an individual. But needless to say, I will respect someone's decision if they want to do it because everyone has to do what's working best for them. So I would never go out and say how I think it's this and that because who, who I don't know if that person watching that had family members who died from COVID. So there's a different sensitivity they're going to have to what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Um, and I think people just need to think. I just feel like, I don't know, when you're on a platform, you just really need to think about what it is that you're saying or doing as an individual. That's personally just how I feel. You need to be very, very mindful of that. And just think about what you're saying or doing when it comes to that. And don't just be all willy-nilly, think you can say anything, because you kind of can't. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I said, like, it's just, I, I, I kind of understand maybe what he was trying to say, but the delivery was just off. Um, you know, being that I am someone that you would consider to be part of like two marginalized communities, um, I'm, I like to stay very objective when I hear things. So I don't necessarily think a lot of people all the time are racist, homophobic, or transphobic. I think some people can just be ignorant. There is a difference, you know? And that's all I'm gonna say on this subject. Let's move on. <laughs> First on my list here is Jason, Britt, Lizzo, Peter, and Drew. I want to know here what the storyline is. Where is the storyline going? Like, where is this going exactly? I'm not, I wasn't really invested in Drew, to be honest. There's so many quarter mains on canvas right now. I can't even keep up. But I remember there was a time when Bob Goose wrote for the show and people were complaining that all the quarter, there was not enough quarter mains on. So, can't please everybody. <laughs> but um, I think this was a way for the writers to bring Jason and Britt back together. I don't know if I'm really that even that in invested in them anymore, but we'll, we'll kind of see as time goes on. I'm willing to see what happens as time goes on. Let's next talk about Sunny, Carly, Nina, Willow, and Michael. And you guys know that this is a Mina and a Cena channel, okay? We ship Mina and Cena, which is Mike and Nina and Sunny Mina, you know? I'm a huge supporter of them. Um, I just, I like this new Sunny because I really despise Sunny for the years. Not Maurice Bernard, but Sunny. Sonny's character to me was really trash, kind of like Luke Spencer. You know, how was the Luke and Laura have the greatest love of all time when he raped her and met that clause in the 70s? How does that work? <laughs> how does that work? <laughs> but uh, Sonny to me was a pretty trash character, honestly. Honestly, for years, he's always been trash to me. But now it's like, I'm actually liking him a little bit. He seems softer, he seems more vulnerable. I just, I like this side of Sonny a lot more. And I'm glad that Willow reminded Carly that she is Wiley's mother, not Carly. You know what I mean? So Willow can make whatever decisions her and Michael think are best for Carly. And Carly just needs to butt out because your vendetta with Nina is not, 
you know what I mean? You can't just like falter this into everything. And I get it, Carly's anger, frustration. I'm still trying to figure out how did Nina commit fraud exactly? Can someone explain that to me? You was holding someone's identity from them. How does that was necessarily commit fraud? Like I don't get like how how exactly will this be prosecuted in the in the in the in the, in the courts of Soapland? Like how does that work? How exactly is that fraud? Can someone really explain that to me honestly? Can someone explain that to me? How is that fraud what Nina did? I, I don't get it. She just held the man's identity from him. She said just as I wasn't gonna tell him. That's almost like me having an affair. That's morally wrong, but that's not legally wrong. So I, I don't know. Maybe somebody can explain that to me. I don't. I don't see how it's fraud personally. I just, I'm not saying what Nina did was right, but how is that something she could be prosecuted for? She didn't sleep with him, so she not she took advantage of him. So um, they took him to the hospital. I don't know. Let's 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 move on. I do want to talk about, you know, Nell. Poor Nell. May she rest in peace. Peace. I said priest, Bruce, peace. I never liked how they gave Nell the Claudia Zakara treatment. Um, I never liked that, but you know, Nell was not really the best of all characters, honestly, I can say she wasn't the best, which makes me think about Esme. They're very similar. Um, I'm gonna get to Esme in just a second here. Let's talk about Curtis's father. Um, we all knew who that was his father. I, I just, we all knew watching the weeks. Yeah, that's Curtis's dad. Yeah, that's that's his dad. All right, that's his dad. We see you, daddy. Oh, we, we see you. My whole thing is, why was it not safe for his father to come out? What was it that was so big that was not safe? Like, what, are you part of the WSB or something? Like, what's going on? Which, I would like that if he was. Why was it not safe for him to come out all these years? And I'm kind of wondering, is there gonna be like a twist where like Aunt Curtis is really Aunt Stella's son or something? You know, kind of like how they do on days where like Paulina's really like um, uh, Lonnie's mom or whatever, the prices. That's probably they never changed her name on days. See, writers be doing little, little stuff here and there. They be plotting stuff, they be plotting. All right, but I wanna know with Curtis's father, why was it not safe exactly? What was going on with that? Next, let's talk about Nicholas and Ava. Um, I'm not understanding why Nicholas didn't trust Ava enough to let him know, let her know what's going on. Ava was at one point in time in her life a whole entire mafiosa, running the Jerome family crime organization. So I don't understand why Nicholas felt like he couldn't tell me, like, uh, sorry, Ava that she's no saint. So I never really understood that. Maybe somebody can explain that to me. I, I don't, I don't know. And um, that brings me next to Sean and Nicholas. This happened like a week and a half ago when I saw Sean was like, you know. Hey, you know, you shot an innocent woman. Like, you know what I mean? You shot an innocent woman, frame me for it. And I'm like, you were there to shoot someone that day too. So, I'm not, I'm not understanding. You were there to shoot someone that day too. Like, why are you trying to act like you were so high and mighty? You were Sonny's hitman. Anybody works for Sonny, I'm sorry. You don't get points off of my book. I'm sorry, you just don't. You don't get points off my book. You were there, you were there to kill someone too yourself. So you went to jail for a different crime. You were there to kill someone too. Granted, that person might not have been innocent because he was in part of the organizations, but you were there to kill somebody too, who also had a family. Like, Sean, miss me with all this stuff, man. Just miss me with it, man. Just miss me with it. Miss me with it, okay? It's falling on deaf ears with me, and this is hopefully. I'm not, I'm not even falling for it, Sean, I'm not. I'm not. I was trained for a crime I didn't commit. You were a whole hit, man. Like, really? Really? Come on, guys. You, you know, I, I'm pretty optimistic about outlooks here. Come on. <laughs> Am I gonna go with Team Cassidine or Team Butler? Team Cassidine. That's right, guys. Team Cassidine. I'm gonna see Let's talk about Esme. What is Esme's goal? Like, what is her end game? I'm getting, I'm growing tired of this storyline, guys. What is Esme? What do you, what, what do you, what do you want? Are you Ryan Chamberlain's daughter? Are you his niece? What's going on? You know, I, I got it. What's going on, Esme? What's Esme? What's going on here? What are you after exactly? What is your end game? It's just, it's gotten so convoluted. I'm like, I don't know if I even care anymore. And that's kind of what they did with Nell. It just got drawn out so much. I wasn't really invested in it, honestly. I really was not invested in Nell. Really was not invested in it. Um, ooh, let me talk about these two before I forget because I didn't write them down on my list. <laughs> Sasha and Brando. Sasha and Brando is a good aside. Um, you know, that was a literary term aside where it's like a background story that's just there to help fill in the gaps. That's definitely Sasha and Brando for me. Um, they're giving me Ned and Lois vibes, honestly, because Ned and Lois were very backgroundish characters. 
in a way, a lot of the times. Um, and that's not a representation of the actors, because sometimes it's just the roles they're given. You know, it's kind of like with the four Carlys. People think there were three Carlys, there was actually four. One of them is never acknowledged. It didn't, I think she was probably a great actress. It just didn't work for the role. She didn't work for that role. It was Jennifer Bransford. It, she didn't work for the role, but I, I think she's probably a great actress, but no one really acknowledges her. She was a third Carly. It's like, you know, and Lord, you know, like in Harry Potter, he who shall not be named. It's like they never named the third Carly for some reason. But um, it's kind of like that with uh, Sasha and Brando. I just feel like this storyline, um, I'm happy for them and everything, but I'm just, I'm not invested. Glass is really annoying. I'm finding the whole storyline annoying. Where's the, where's the soapy angst with them? I'm just not seeing it with them. Where is that? Speaking of which, didn't Mike, cause Mike, Sonny's father, his original name was Michael Corinto Sr. That's why Sonny is a junior. That's why he's called Sonny. So Mike's real last name isn't Corbin. So, or at least from what I know. So how is Brando's last name Corbin? Can someone explain that to me? Maybe I'm missing something? Cause I'm usually so kind of seer, but I'm usually, I feel like I'm missing something there. And so that wasn't Mike's real last name. How is Brando Corbin? But I'm gonna trust that the writers did their due diligence on that, but they didn't with the whole Nicholas shooting Hayden thing, making half the cast forget that everyone already knew. And where are they going with that, by the way? Where are they going with this Hayden thing? Is she coming back? And there's all this talk about Jeff Weber. What's going on? Elizabeth is GH legacy right there. And she's become a background character. It's kind of sad. Really sad, honestly. Let's talk about BLQ, Brooklyn and Bailey Lois. Quartermate. Okay, here's the thing. Um, Amanda Setter is killing it as Brooklyn. She's killing it. Other actresses have been in the role. I've never really, it's never really zapped with me. And like I said, there's some actresses, they're in the role and they are actors, they're in a certain role, they can't do it. And there's that run actor, actress that sticks. Amanda Seton is killing it as Brooklyn. I really felt those tears, I really felt that. The Valentine was a little bit over the top for me, honestly, personally. Um, you've done worse. So I don't know what's all this about, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know, you know what I mean? But, um, I don't get why Brooklyn couldn't just tell Valentine for Maxie's sake so they can keep, you know, little Bailey safe. I think Valentine at some point would have understood. She did it for the stock, but it became more noble over time. And I still even now think that Valentine at some point will understand because he's a whole part of the reason why this happened in the first place. You know what I mean? He's a whole part of this reason. Not so much the stock thing, I mean, Brooklyn's plan was very selfish, but just like them using her as Valentine's child to save her from Peter. Um, I feel like Valentine did that to himself in a way. I don't know why, I just, I really feel like he did it, honestly. I really feel like he did that to himself in some type of way. But, you know, um, I feel like he's gonna keep little Bailey safe. I really do, I really hope he would keep little Bailey safe. I really honestly hope that he would, guys. I really hope that he will. Um, Next on my list is Leo. This is a very quick video, guys. Guys, I've been so busy. I'm gonna get to some more stuff in a little bit, but Leo, Leo Cordemain. Pre-Olivia would have acted like this in such denial, but Olivia Q, a little bit of Quartermain, who was once the psychic of Port Charles, I don't really get why her all her this resistance towards Leo, but it is a soap. So it makes sense it would be her and not Ned. I know if Julian was around, it would have been Julian with the resistance more than anything. I think that would have played better. You know what I mean? Um, in regards to that, guys. And guys, that is my GH review. It's a little quick and brief for this week, guys, but um, I'm happy to be back. This video was a little bit short, or it might be longer, depending on how my editor goes. Um, but I'm happy to be back, guys. Like I said, I was traveling also a few weeks in October, my birthday, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So that was why I just got so delayed in coming back. It just took such a long time. And that's one of the reasons why I don't really give out an exact time I'm coming out, even though it's usually every Sunday. Um, just because I know my life and my schedule on top of that. That's why I got a salute Brock TV in Albert Bostic because they do this five days a week. And I know they gotta come home and quickly watch it because that's when the episode posted that day. So, you know, guys, let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> let's give them a round of applause because that's not easy to do that. It's really not easy to do that, but it does make their content a lot more consistent in that way. So I gotta give them that my hats off to them on that one. But it feels good to be back, guys. I hope you guys love the little Shady Brooks skit. I had to, I have to make fun of myself. I have to do that. You can't take yourself too seriously, guys. There's definitely more skits and more stuff along the way coming. 
Um, I'm so happy to be back. I'm definitely gonna be doing a day's review sometime in the future. Since I won't be doing any South African soaps, I may open up to Wine and Airbnb. I don't know. I heard Abby is teleporting places. Okay. <laughs> okay. That just feels out of nowhere. That doesn't seem like Young Arrestors is thing. More like a general hospital thing or a Days thing. Days has been on point lately, so I gotta do a review on them lately. Guys, and that I think is my whole entire general hospital review. Hopefully this wasn't too long or too short, depending on how editing goes. And this has been Soap Sanctuary. This has been Soap Sanctuary. It's good to be back.